first hop redundancy protocols. Let's start with HSRP, Hot Standby Routing Protocol. We're going to set it up from scratch in GNS3. Not a whole lot of configuration, but if you're not familiar with HSRP, there will be a couple new configs that uh, you can learn today. So let's get started here. Two switches, just dummy switches in GNS3. No config needed on those devices. We'll start with two. I'm um, using 2610 routers. And let's go with one PC, which is actually a router that will dumb down. Last but not least, we will use uh, another device I've created, which is just a router, but we use it as a cloud or an external. Um, we're going to simulate the internet, so to speak. So what we'll do on that later is we'll configure a uh, loopback interface, and we'll give it 8.8.8.8. .8 so we'll be able to uh, test outside connectivity with that. simulated outside connectivity but anyway it's the same same thing because we're testing outside of our first router first hop so let's get started here we're going to connect everything up <sighs> coffee Go ahead and hide the host name on the switches, it's not important. Show all our interfaces. Let's go ahead and move these around because you know how OCD I am with my uh, interface labels in GNS3. Just right. Let's go ahead and uh, get rid of the switch port labels. Not important. Not important for this lab. Missed a couple. Let's label our subnet. We'll make this uh, fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 side of both routers and the PC will be 10.1.1.0. And you just killed your link. Let's try that again. Boom. Duplicate. Love that feature. <coughs> Outbound subnet for these routers will be 2.2. 10.2.2.2. Excuse me, 10.2.2.0, 24-bit subnet. And we'll put 8.8.8.8 up here. Good old DNS server. Now, if you're doing this lab at home, if you want to repeat this lab, work through it, um, you can use static routing, but today I'm just going to use EIGRP because I like EIGRP and it'll make for a little faster work. Plus, I mean, once you've done static routing, you pretty much have it down. Maybe practice it once or twice, but it's like the same thing over and over. <coughs> EIGRP. Um, not to say that that's so different every time you do it, but there are a couple different things you can do with EIGRP. You can advertise an IP address at a time, or you can advertise for a complete subnet, just depending on how you utilize, and if you utilize, a wildcard mask. So we labeled the uh, IP settings for our little fake PC down there. We're giving it 10.1.1.175, 24-bit mask, and the DG will be the default gateway will be 10.1.1.1. So first, let's go through, set that up on the uh, PC. We're going to dumb it down, no IP routing. 
Global configuration mode, no IP routing. You basically just told that Cisco router, hey, you're not a router. <clears throat> now you're going to set a default gateway by using the command under global configuration mode, IP default slash gateway, and name it 10.1.1.1. .1 .1. Let's go ahead and set up interface fast ethernet 0 slash 0, and IP address, the same one we made in our label down there, along with the subnet, no shutty. So just like that, you've turned that thing into a simulated PC. No IP routing, you gave it an IP default gateway, and you gave it an IP address and uh, subnet mask. So that PC is done. Don't need any more configuration on him. We'll use him a little later for testing purposes, a ping and possibly a trace route. I don't remember whether or not I utilize this in this lab, but either way, we'll at least ping with that. So let's hop over to router 1. <coughs> now initially on router 1, we're going to set him up as the uh, default router without HSRP. So let's set up his 00 interface. We'll give him 10.1.1.1, which is PC's default gateway. Let's go ahead and throw an IP on his other interface, his outbound interface. We'll give him the 2.2.1. Gotta throw IP in front of that. Control A, jump back to the beginning of the line. There you go. No shutty. So I go ahead and enable EIGRP on this guy. So, network. Yeah, GRP Autonomous System 1, network, and we'll use the exact IP address of that uh, 01 interface. Now, on the 00 interface, we'll set them up with a wildcard mask, only because we plan on changing that IP and we don't have to go back in there that way and change how we set up EIGRP. I was going to say, I think I did it like that. Nope. 0, .0, .0, 0 0.0.0.255. That means look at me, look at me, look at me. I don't care. <coughs> Do show IP interface. Breathe. There we go. Both of them are up with an IP. <coughs> Let's fire him up. Open a console. Here's our internet CLI, which is just another 29th. Yeah, 2610 router. Let's configure his uh, 00, 00 interface. Give him 2.2.3 since he's on that subnet. 24 bit mass, no shutty. <coughs> Alright, so let's configure a loopback address. Interface loopback. Okay, so we have loopback1, and we'll give it IP address of 8.8.8.8, .8 and we can give it a 32-bit mask, which says only this IP address. We're not advertising for anything more. Alright, set up the IGRP Autonomous System 1. Let's go ahead and advertise just the interface IP address. Go ahead and do the same for its loopback address. Boop. And we should be all set on there. Let's connect. Excuse me, let's test connectivity. And we can ping. from the PC and we can ping
also. Looks like our default gateway is working correctly. Let's hop back over to router one and we will shut them down. So basically we're just simulating right now what if you were on a network and your default gateway just went down. I mean things do happen. Cisco routers are extremely uh, reliable. It doesn't happen very often but things do happen whether it's hardware or configuration settings. Something changes, something happens, your default gateway goes down guess what we can no longer ping out we can't connect to the outside we cannot get off of our local subnet so now we're gonna show you how to set up HSRP so we went ahead and changed the router one's fast ethernet 0 slash 0 IP address <coughs> on the topology end anyway to uh, dot 3 which would be 10.1.1.3 .1 .1 so we're just gonna label the rest of this topology before we move on Okay, let's get started with router 2. Let's fire them up. And let's console. Boom. Let's go to his uh, fast ethernet zero slash zero interface through the IP address we have in our topology there. Nah, you might want to give it a subnet. There you go. Let's configure his outbound interface zero one. Let's give him the same one we have in our topology two dot two dot two. Subnet twenty four bit. No shuddy. Enable EIGRP <coughs> Autonomous System 1 Network. I'll advertise both of our interfaces. Alrighty. So right now, neither one of these routers have the IP address that is assigned as the default gateway on the PC down there. So we're going to throw these guys into standby, which basically says turn on HSRP, which is a per interface command. So as you can see, on router 2, we hopped on fast ethernet 0 slash 0. We threw the uh, command of standby 1, which means standby group 1, and then use the IP address, which will be the virtual IP address of the standby interface. So we're going to perform the same command on router 1, which will throw him in. Well, first we got to change the IP address since it's shut down right now. We can't use the virtual IP address as a physical IP address on the router. So we change that to dot .3 as we did on the topology. Now we can stand by group 1 on the same interface, give it the virtual IP address, So you see both these routers are configured with the same virtual IP address. This is what makes makes the magic happen, so to speak. So if one were to go down, that default gateway of the PC can still connect to that second one for two reasons. One, they have the same virtual IP address and the magic of the virtual MAC address. So show standby. We see that this router is in standby mode. It's part of group one. Uh, virtual IP address is 10.1.1.1. .1 .1 .1. And we see the standby router is local. 
and active router is 10.1.1.2. So this one here, router 2, shows that the state is active. Local router is, excuse me, active router is local. Standby router is 10.1.1.3. So that command shows you quite a bit. It'll tell you whether or not this is the active router, and it'll show you who the standby router is and who the active router is, along with the uh, virtual MAC address. And you can see that the local virtual MAC address is the same as the, <coughs> excuse me, as the active virtual MAC address. They both share the same virtual MAC and virtual IP. All right, so we went ahead and since router two was the active <coughs> router, meaning that PC one would have been going through router two, we went ahead and shut him down. And as you can see, we're still able to ping, which tells us that the magic of HR, HSRP has taken over and router one has become the active router. So if we turn router 2's interface back on, let's do a do show standby. It's still coming back up. It went from speak to standby. So now router 2 is in standby. And router 1 should be your active standby router. Excuse me, your active HSRP router. Yeah, there you go, buddy state is active so just that fast I mean it, it takes over instantly the end user would never even experience any loss of connectivity so let's go ahead and shut down router 1's interface and you can see those messages pop up just that fast. Look at Router 2's message. State from standby to active just that fast. And on the PC, we can still ping. One was eaten by ARP, but that's okay. Just like that, we're able to ping. So you can see how fast that HSRP converges, so to speak. Uh, it's a great technology to know. Thanks for watching.